welcome to our channel. If you're new here, my name's Libby and I'm the other half of Full Time Huns, the podcast, which I share with my best friend Kim. Um, basically, today I wanted to share with you my birth story. Um, so I've got two little boys, um, so I thought I'd share my birth story with each of them. I'll do one video um, for my first son, Rex, and then I'll do another video for my second son, Wolf. Um, so yeah, so I'll get started. So um, firstly, um, with my first son, I um, found out I was pregnant when I was 22. Um, and it was such an amazing pregnancy. It was so easy. I had no real problems. Um, so yeah, so once I got to 37 weeks, I decided that I was going to start drinking raspberry leaf tea and exercising and I went on walks like every single day. I went for a walk in the morning, I went for a walk in the evening, like I literally was trying everything to get him out. Um, so anyway, so none of it was working and I then got to 40 weeks and I went to the midwife and she did a sweep but she couldn't do the sweep properly um because my son's head was basically like too low so she said like i can feel the head um but i can't do the sweep so i broke down i was so upset and she was like i'll book you back in so that was on the thursday and then she was like i'll book you back in um on the monday but it was a bank holiday weekend um so then that saturday after the thursday I'd started losing my mucus plug and um, I was so excited. I was like, this is it. Like my mucus plug is gone. This means that he's coming um, and then nothing happened. So then that Saturday night, I started what I thought was contractions. So I went to bed and my stomach was tightening and I was quite uncomfortable. Like I feel a lot of pressure in my bum. Um, so, we were just like, oh, okay, we'll just see see how it goes. So um, the next day I woke up and everything had stopped and I was absolutely devastated because I was like, I thought so badly that the day before that it was gonna happen. So me and my husband, we went for a walk um, and then on that walk, the contraction started again. So I got a coffee and I was like, this is it, it's happening. I phoned up the triage and I was like, I think I'm having contractions. Um, please, can I come in? Um, so I went in and um, the midwife, like she got me to wee in like a pot just to like check it over and everything. And then when she came back after testing the wee, she was like, you're not in labor. Like I can tell that you're not in labor. You need to go home. So we were gutted again. So we went home and the contractions started again that evening. So they these contractions were coming like every kind of like 20 minutes. They weren't really, I thought that it was labor, okay? So like these contractions were coming like every 20 minutes. I was like, this is it. I felt like I really needed to go to the toilet though. So I rung triage again at about three in the morning. And she was like, okay because of the pressure in your bum, please come in. Um, so I went in and she measured me and she was like, great news, you're two centimeters. Um, but unfortunately, sorry, my little boy is crying. Um, yeah, so she was like, great news, you're two centimeters. Um, and I was like, great, like I, I actually, something's happening. And she was like, but the bad news is you can only be admitted when you're four. She was like, you can um, go down to um, the antenatal ward and you can labor there or you can go home. And I didn't really have a birth plan, but what I knew is that I wanted to, I wanted to labor as long as I could at home and I wanted to have a water birth. So I was like, no, I'll go home. So me and my husband at the time, we were living like by the sea 
a.m. So we went for a walk on the beach. It was about five o'clock in the morning. I was still getting like quite consistent contractions. Um, so then we went home, he went back to bed because I knew that like this was happening. Um, the midwife had said like, you will be back today. Um, so yeah, so then he went to bed to get some rest and I got in the bath. Now, as soon as I got in the bath, my contractions completely went like they disappeared and I was like for god's sake this is so annoying like, I just want to have this baby and I um went and sat on my ball and I bounced on my ball and I went for another walk and then the contractions picked up again and they started coming every 10 minutes so I rung up again and I was like please can I come be checked I was two centimeters last night um can you come can, can I come in to be seen and they were like yes come in so I went in and they checked me and that she, she was like the midwife that I had that checked me she was sort of a bit like I don't think you're in labor like you're not really showing any signs and I was like please just check me like I've been in agony at home um, and she was, she checked me and she was like, you're four centimeters, you're not going home. And me and Dan were like, oh my God, like this is amazing. I rang my mum. I was like, please like come to the hospital, bring sandwiches. Like we're having this baby today. And then the contractions stopped again. And I was like, I said to the midwife, like, honestly, like, are you going to send me home? Because the contractions keep stopping. She was like, no, you're four centimeters. You can stay. Um, so don't worry about it do you need any pain relief and I was like no like I'm fine like I just want to go as long as I can without any pain relief um and then she went off and the contractions picked up again when she was out of the room so I was like okay I do want pain relief um can you get her to get me some paracetamol yeah. so she came back and she gave me some codeine I think it is and um that was fine that was working and then all of a sudden like it just got so intense so i was like said to my husband like you're gonna have to go back and get her to get me the gas and air so he went and got the gas and air and as soon as i was on that the contractions were coming like thick and fast like they were so painful and so like quick um so yeah, so in the hospital that I was at, they're not allowed to check you, they could only check you once every four hours. So I got admitted into um, the labour ward at 3pm, so then I had someone come back at 8, they didn't come back at 7, they came back at 8, because 8 is when handover is. Um, so she, I had a new midwife now, and she checked me, and she was like, I'm so sorry, darling, but you're uh, you're still only four. And I was like, how? Like, I've been laboring for four hours. How can I still only be four? And she felt my tummy again, and she was like, your baby's back to back. Now, I knew that babies could, could be breached back to back and stuff like that, but I wasn't aware of how they affected your labor. And basically, because... He was coming down, but his head was not in the right position. He was coming down with each contraction, but then going straight back up again. So my cervix wasn't opening. She was like, I'll leave you for another four hours. Um, and then we'll come back and check you again. So then she came back at 12 o'clock now. So 12 o'clock at night. Um, and she checked me again. And she was like, I'm so sorry. You're still only four. Um, we can break your waters and I was like okay so she was like I'll break your waters for you that should bring things along so they broke my waters but unfortunately when you have your waters broken you um have you have to have you have to lay in the bed because you have to have a heart monitor for the baby so they can make sure that the baby's not in distress from the waters breaking so she was like you'll have to stay um on this monitor for half an hour and she came back and she was like, your baby's a little bit distressed, so we're gonna keep you on it a bit longer. And it ended up that I ended up that I was on the heart monitor for the baby, um, like for another four hours. Um, and then they came back and checked me again four hours after my ward had been broken. And she was like, you're still not making any progress. You're still four centimeters. We need to get this moving now because the baby is in distress and you have to have given birth to your baby within 24 hours of the waters breaking. Um, so they offered me um, the Pitocin drip and 
I was like, yes, fine, whatever, I'll take it. And she was like, it's it's going to bring your contractions like even more thick and fast and you're gonna have to stay on the heart monitor. And then I was like, okay, that's fine. Um, and that's when my husband said to me, do you think it's time that you have an epidural? And I was absolutely devastated because I really didn't wanna have an epidural. Like I'd heard like so many horror stories about it. Um, and then my mum was just like, look, like you've been in so much pain now for so long, like you're getting tired, you need to have some rest. And the midwife was like, yeah, like this is probably the better option. So I had the epidural. So basically what they made me do is I had the gas in there and I was bent over the bed. And every time I had a contraction, I had to tell the anaesthetist because he can't put the line in if you're having a contraction. So they then popped the needle into my back and then I had a wire that was connected to my back and it sort of like came over my shoulder and it was connected to a drip and I had a button so I could administer the epidural. So basically if you don't press the button the epidural will wear off and you'll start to feel the contractions again. So you just have to keep pressing it to top it up. Um, and yeah so I had that in and at about so I had that epidural put in at 3 a.m. And then at about 7 a.m. I woke up because I'd had quite a nice sleep. Like I went straight to sleep because I couldn't feel anything. And um, my husband and my mum had a sleep as well. And then at seven, I woke up screaming because all of a sudden I had like all these contractions, one on top of the other, because I hadn't um, obviously administered the um, epidural. So then, they changed my bag over and when I was administering it, I was like, I can still feel everything. Like I'm in so much pain, like please someone help me. And um, basically what had happened is, is because of um, like the way that they put it into your spine, only my right side um, was numb and then I could feel everything in my left side. Um, so the anaesthetist came back in, re um did the line in my back and then everything was okay again so i was then um checked that morning and i was six centimeters so i'd gained two centimeters in like honestly what four hours and i was so defeated but they were like you're having your baby today so um then it got to the next time that I was checked four hours later and I was nine centimeters. So that was at about one o'clock. And then all of a sudden, like I had like the biggest urge to push. I was like, I need to push. I feel like I really need to go to the toilet. Someone take me to the toilet. I'm gonna poo myself. And she was like, you're not gonna poo yourself. It's just the baby coming down into the birth canal. Like you're not going to poo. And if you do, it doesn't matter. And I was like, someone just take me to the toilet. Like screaming. Um, so yeah, so then at that point they were like, okay, we can't check you yet. Um, so just keep going with it. It's fine. You're not gonna go to the toilet. Um, and then they came and checked me again about an hour later because I kept saying that like, I need to push, I need to push. Um, and when they checked me, she was like, well done, you're 10 centimetres. Um, you can feel his head if you want to. And I was like, okay. So then I felt, I put my hand down there and I could feel his head. And I was just like, oh my God, this is amazing. Um, and because I had been on the epidural, I was like, I don't want to be um, under the epidural, like whilst I am pushing, because I want to be able to feel the contractions so that I know when to push. So they were like, that's fine. So then I just stopped administering the button and um, I could start feeling the contractions again. So I started pushing um on all fours like bent over the bed and i was so uncomfortable like i just couldn't get comfy like that um and he wasn't coming down because he was back to back every push that i did he just couldn't get over like the bend um to come out um so what they did is they called in the doctors and the doctors came in and he was like i am the doctor on call and basically told me like what would happen if I didn't give birth within the next hour 
and they would take me off to theatre and they'd do an emergency C-section. And I, once I heard that, I was like, I don't, I honestly, I can't do that. So then I was like in the zone, like I need to push this baby out. Um, so I ended up pushing for about an hour and eventually he turned. So in the birth canal, he turned and he went the right way to come out. And so I started pushing and obviously everyone knows about the ring of fire and if you haven't given birth yet and you're watching this, the ring of fire is basically when the head is coming out of your vagina, it burns like you're getting like a, a Chinese burn, like it stings so bad, it just feels like hot. So I could feel that and I was like that means he's coming, he's coming, he's coming and literally I just pushed through that um like burning sensation and his head came out and they were like the head's out the head's out so then like i put my hand down there because i gave birth on my back um on the bed and um yeah so i put my head my hand down there and felt the head and then they were like with the next contraction you've just got to do one big push and he'll be here so then I did one big push and out he came and he was so slippery and like they they picked him up um, and put him on my chest and honestly like the feeling when you give birth is honestly like that relief I was like oh my god like I burst into tears I was like this is the most magical moment of my life like everyone was crying and when i was given when i when i was pushing i didn't make any noise okay so like i was silent like completely silent and i put that down to having an epidural <laughs> because i even though i stopped using the epidural i couldn't really feel anything um so yeah so they put him on my chest and i did skin to skin and honestly like it was just amazing and then I like checked his legs and like opened them up to make sure that he was still a boy and he was. And that was my son Rex was born, brought into the world at five past 4 p.m. on the 18th of April. So I got admitted onto labor ward at 3 p.m. on the 17th of April and I gave birth to him at five past four. So I was in that hospital for 25 hours and do you know what like looking back now and comparing it to my second birth it it was so so exhausting but i wouldn't change it for the world like even though i wanted a water birth and i wanted um to like have hardly any pain relief and stuff like that that wasn't the plan for that birth like i wouldn't have been able to have a water birth with him being back to back like it just wasn't possible um but i wouldn't change it at all and um yeah it was completely like amazing and honestly like me and my husband were just in this like love bubble because having your first baby and giving birth to them and looking at them and seeing like this little person that you've both made together is just unbelievable and it's such an amazing feeling so yeah so then um i had to stay overnight because i'd had a epidural um so, oh, actually, before that, so after you give birth, they put the baby on you, and then they're like, okay, now you've got, now you've gone through all that, you've got to birth the placenta, and I was like, brilliant. Um, so I adopted to have the injection to birth my placenta, so she just popped a little prick into my thigh, and um, she basically like held onto the umbilical cord and pulled it, and then I just gave like it just came out and it was like the most relief like relieving feeling that placenta coming out i was like oh my god like thank goodness this is over um i didn't have any tears um i just had two grazes um so it was i didn't need any stitching or anything like that like the two grazes were quite painful like to sit on and I was really swollen down there like really really swollen like it was like a giant sugar puff like swollen um so yeah so it honestly like not having any stitches like, I was so lucky um so yeah so I had to then stay overnight because I'd had the epidural and um, you have a catheter in 
so um, I had to stay overnight so then my husband went home and he came back again the following day um, at seven o'clock in the morning and I had decided to breastfeed so I was breastfeeding him and we had like a beautiful breastfeeding like experience like he latched straight away I didn't have any issues at all um, which is completely different to my second baby so if um, my birth story with my second baby and my breastfeeding journey is two completely different things so if you want to hear that side of things then I will link um, that video for you down here um but yeah so and then we went home at 12 p.m he passed all of his checks and we went home as a little family and now he is a boisterous beautiful little four-year-old boy and honestly even though i didn't have the birth that i wanted i wouldn't change it and every time I think of that birth like it's such a beautiful memory because it was my first boy and it was amazing so yeah so thank you um for listening to my birth story and if you would like to listen to my other birth story then please do and um that one is all about hypnobirthing and I had a water birth so yeah so I'll go into all of that with my second son and yeah I hope to see you again in the next one and also we've got Kim is going to be doing her birth story with her two kids um so yeah pr please like and subscribe before you go and we've got a lot more content coming to you